The most common vascular lesions in the small bowel are angiectasias, visualized as flat, small or medium-sized red lesions. In contrast, lymphangiectasia presents with whitish villi. It is a common and unspecific finding. However, sometimes lymphangiectasia appears secondary to other diseases, as in this patient with a tumor of the mesentery and history of radiation. The extent of dilation and deformation of the villi clearly demonstrates the need to search for underlying diseases with imaging techniques and biopsy. Mid-gastrointestinal bleeding may occur in these patients due to erosions in the vulnerable swollen mucosa. Primary or idiopathic intestinal lymphangiectasia, so-called Waldman's disease, is a rare disease, as in this 52-year-old man, with protein-losing enteropathy. Again, diffuse pathologic dilation of the lymph vessels is documented by club-shaped white villi with tips broader than the base. Biopsy is crucial to exclude underlying diseases, for instance infections such as Whipple's disease. Small bowel findings in portal hypertension are usually subtle and include erythema, red spots, and small mucosal breaks. On the way towards the small bowel, capsule endoscopy shows esophageal varices and portal hypertensive gastropathy with pronounced areae gastrici. Additionally, multiple small red spots like, like petechiae are seen in the small bowel, suspicious for portal hypertensive enteropathy. The bleeding potential is unclear and probably less than for esophageal varices. However, in this patient with liver cirrhosis and recurrent mid-gastrointestinal GI bleeding, jejunal varices could be identified by capsule endoscopy. In contrast to harmless penectasias, varices are protruding into the lumen. These tortuous congested vessels are a potential bleeding source. This patient underwent segmental jejunal resection for recurrent overt bleeding. Acute intestinal ischemia can be visualized endoscopically as segmental ulceration. In this case of non-occlusive ischemia in a young patient, Superficial ulceration is seen in the distal duodenum and jejunum. The mucosa still looks vital as there is no bluish congestion in this segment. However, the lumen is distended and without peristalsis. Therefore, a transnasal decompression tube has been advanced endoscopically. After one week, mucosa has partially recovered. The lumen is less distended and peristalsis is seen again. There are still areas with villus atrophy, fissures, mosaic pattern and white villi surrounding the healing ulcers. The next case shows a more chronic course with persisting diarrhea after embolectomy of the superior mesentery artery in an elderly patient. Capsule endoscopy demonstrates thickened mucosa with fibrin-coated ulcers. Again, areas with partial healing show unspecific changes as edematous mucosa with partial villus atrophy and mosaic pattern. Systemic vasculitis may rarely affect the small bowel, as in this patient with mid-GI bleeding. Antigrade single balloon enteroscopy shows severe ulcerations and black necrosis of the jejunum. Biopsies confirmed vasculitis.